Okay, we're back here live at HP Discover 2012 in Europe in Germany. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to events where the action is, extract the signal from the noise. This is part of our SiliconAngle.tv independent editorial coverage. We love going to the events. This is our third HP Discover. And uh, we love to talk to anyone who's got the signal from the noise. And my guest here is a good friend of SiliconAngle and also social media uh, buddy on Twitter, Sam Johnson, at, at Sam J. Uh, Sam, welcome back to theCUBE. Hi John, good to see you. You're a CUBE alumni, as we say. <laughs> You've been on the CUBE before. Uh -huh. Also, you're, you're what we call a tech athlete. You're one of the, the mavericks out there who actually is out in, out in the trenches, uh, rolling up your sleeves, um, getting the job done, playing with technology, deploying stuff, also communicating with that. Obviously in social media, you have a, you have a great fan base. You're part of the Twitterati and the Clouderati um, and uh, very active. So it's great to, great to see you and great to have you on the CUBE. Um, you've also worked at Google in, the, in, in their data center, storage, servers, all that good stuff, and now at Equinox uh, doing a lot of, the, you know about data centers. <laughs> um, we don't want to drill into the whole Google thing because I know confidentially a lot of stuff there, but I do want to pick your brain for this talk here at HP Discover to try to kind of extract the signal from the noise here. And obviously mm -hmm. HP as a company has a black eye right now, um, destruction of, of stock values, well documented, huge tornado of, of of uh, uh, crap right now around HP. But outside of that, you know, that putting that aside, HP's got some really cool technology. Uh, and they got some, they're playing in a lot of big areas. Obviously they're big data, part of autonomy, and some other parts of the group. And obviously they have infrastructure and they got, you know, obviously computing products, personal products. Um, and so they're poised for a comeback, in my opinion. Um, some people may debate that, but happy, happy to do that in another forum. But I want to talk to you about the data center, because that's where the action is. On the consumer web, as you know, on Twitter, RIP Frothy Times, TechCrunch wrote an article, uh, oh, it's the world's crashing. Well, their world's crashing. The consumer web is kind of going through a, a, a thinning of the herd, as they say in the VC market, to the consumer wraps are more lifestyle business. Not a lot of Facebooks out there left. Mm -hmm. But on the enterprise side, it's booming. A lot of reconstruction, a lot of transformation, a lot of build out going on, real business being done. Um, and the action's really at the data center. So whether you're a cloud provider, or whether you're an enterprise, or anything, you, there's, some, there's some stuff to do. Yeah, and absolutely and is. so let's 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 drill on that. So, what's your take on the data center? I mean, in our little world, VMware bought Nasira for a billion dollars, and that was game changer. Cisco kind of fell back out of their chair. Um, that, on the networking side, certainly raises some eyebrows. You got hypervisor vendors, you have independent people like HP who are, are agnostic on the hypervisor, you got enterprises, you got software defined blank, yep. everything's now software defined. The cube we can call software defined media. <laughs> um, I don't know, sounds good, but a lot of hype. Well, I where's, mean, the, I where's the signal from that hype? I think at the end of the day, in terms of HP's place in all of this, when you walk through the data center, and especially in any of the enterprise cages and so on, you'll often see a lot of HP kit, both in the, in the compute side and in the networking side as well. Uh, in terms of what's going on in, uh, in computing, I mean, cloud really is the transition from product to service. Um, that's, uh, that's really, when you boil it down, that's, that's what's going on. And that's a fundamental shift for a lot of vendors. Uh, some are doing a better job of it than others. Um, you know, you see, see vendors uh, like Microsoft and so on who traditionally have offered uh, software as a product and now offering software as a service. You get these new generation of vendors like Salesforce who actually have always offered software as a service. So it's a very interesting place to be. Um, you know, the analogy I use, people complain about this, is about electricity. We used to buy electricity as a product, now we buy it as a service. And you know, those who are worth their salt will, will, will still exist uh, in, in the new, new world order, I guess, and those who, who aren't, uh, you know, will, will uh, go and move on to other things. So, so there's a couple key trends that we're, we're following at SiliconANGLE keep on. One is obviously, people are building their own stuff, so the, all the large scale infrastructure guys like Facebook and Google and Amazon now, we've been reported following Google's footsteps, are building their own, right? Because mm -hmm. there's no, no one's delivering anything. And we've heard stories of vendor, big vendor X got booted out because they build their own equipment. Um, not a lot of banks or anyone will do that, so, but eventually that, that's an indicator of what's happening in the marketplace. How does how do you take what Facebook, Google, and Amazon are doing from a quote, business model perspective, and how does that translate to someone who's buying gear in an enterprise, a big bank, big healthcare, you know, these big industries, they're not going to build their own data centers. They're going to outsource here, they're going to have a hybrid, they're going to have some private cloud. What does that tell us about what's going on in the data center? 
Yeah, I think what we're doing is moving a lot from heterogeneous systems to homogeneous systems. So you'll see racks where everything in the rack is the same. Whereas, you know, 10 years ago, you'd look in a rack and there'd be five or 10 different logos. Uh, another, another trend is that, well, I guess one of the enablers for that is that we're now putting reliability into the software rather than the hardware. Because, you know, while it may cost millions of dollars to build a platform like, uh, like you know, the Google platform or the Facebook platform, uh, once you've built it once, you know, the marginal cost of that is zero. Whereas the marginal cost of reliable hardware is linear. The more, you know, the more reliable servers you have, you, the bigger you get, um, the more it costs. So I think that that's one of the, uh, one of the things that these, uh, I guess the pioneers like your Googles and Amazons and so on uh, have created, but it is also available through software like Hadoop and, uh, and through you know, commodity PC hardware and so on. It is actually available to these uh, customers now and they're increasingly starting to use that as well. I want to ask you a question, just kind of change, and we'll come back to some of the, some of the data center conversation. Um, you're on Twitter, very vocal, um, fun to, to follow because you get raw, good content as well as some entertainment uh, as, 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 we, <laughs> as we say on Twitter. It's, it's always fun to have those conversations. But there's a lot of hype. I mean, you, you see the gimmicks all left and right and from a marketing perspective, company, you know, I'm the leader in this and they're marketing all these new concepts. Um, what's your take on that? I mean, obviously, uh, from the perspective of we're in a massively changing marketplace, you don't really need to market well, market, craziness when this massive demand. So the question is, what do you think of some of the marketing out there, and where is the real demand happening in the marketplace? Is it everything, apps, mobile, cloud? So, so marketing, hype, and gimmicks to what companies should be doing where the real demand is. Yeah, I think what you hear people talking about versus what people are actually doing are two very different things. I also think that a lot of the marketing is kind of misplaced. So NoSQL, for example, and big data are, if anything, misnomers. But there is still this big shift, and I'd call it more of an evolution rather than, than a revolution. I mean, big data in itself really is, is uh, you know, looking at data in a different way such that you need to re-engineer your systems to handle uh, you know, the volume, velocity, or variety of that information. Um, Similarly, no SQL, it had nothing to do with SQL, it was all about the relational form, you know, uh, structure of databases. And we're starting to see not only companies like you know, your Googles and Facebooks and so on, but then also companies like Netflix who are rolling out Facebook's Cassandra. That stuff is starting to penetrate the enterprise as well. A lot of enterprises have Hadoop up and running. And so again, very interesting um, to see what people are actually doing rather than what they're talking about. Let's talk about Amazon for a minute, because obviously they just had their Invent conference. Mm -hmm. um, NetApp just announced a deal with, with Amazon, which is allowing some storage on, on uh, that, which might be a nice pathway for some hybrid for NetApp as they kind of try to kind of change the rules a little bit of the game. What's your take of Amazon? Obviously we had Adrian uh, uh, on, uh, Crawford on the, on the Cube at Cassandra Summit, and he was telling me they had the, he had the, the SSD version of the cloud. So, so what's going on with Amazon? And yeah. how does it relate to some of the more practical reliabilities and, and security issues that people need in the enterprise? Well, I think that at the end of the day, uh, you know, your availability is your, is your problem. You own your availability. If you can use software like Cassandra and so on to be able to leverage systems like Amazon, uh, that's great. But really the way that IT is going is a hybrid IT. So, you know, if you ask Gartner, they say that the uh, you know, hybrid IT is the new IT and it's here to stay. What we mean by that is using legacy when it's appropriate, using private cloud when it's appropriate, and using public cloud as well. And what I spend a lot of my time doing is actually working out, you know, across over 100 data centers around the world, how do we connect this stuff together? How do we enable customers, companies to connect to public cloud providers and back into their head and branch offices and make all of that work seamlessly? So let's talk about agile IT. Um, I was just talking with uh, Tom Norton, who's at H HP Global Services, and you know he's awesome. And he was just had a great conversation around big data and how he's how he's delivering customers. And essentially, what we were talking about was the businesses are driving the requirements to IT, kind of like they used to, but now at a larger scale. So IT has to be always on and turn key and push buttons. So they have to be very responsive. How do you build an IT organization? How would you advise folks out there who have to essentially be scalable? flexible and agile. I mean, because you, you want to turn on some public cloud, you push a button. I want to have a hybrid cloud, or I want to turn on a mobile app, I don't want to have to, have to do a huge DevOps rollout. Yeah. So, but I have DevOps, so, yeah. so there's a lot of moving parts here. How do you look at that, and how do you advise, advise uh, companies? So, I think one of the big, um, 
one of the big trends you need to look at is deperimetrization. So what that means is, you know, the old ways have an office and build a firewall around it and you had to come in nine to five to access the IT systems. Nowadays, even the smallest of companies, maybe you've seen the HSBC ad with the lemonade stand. You know, even the smallest of companies are, are multinational, they deal in multiple currencies and, uh, and they, you know, to quote the, the CIO of Bechtel, he, he talks about rather than pulling the network to the data, I'll put the data where the network is. You know, I don't, for my first you know, year or two at Equinix, I never actually had to connect to the LAN or the WAN. Everything I did was through a uh, cloud desktop. I could uh, log in, go into Salesforce and so on from there without having to dial in. That was really helpful. We've just got an expense reporting application now. I do have to connect to the LAN for the first time, so I'm not very happy about that. But I, I think that's a that's a very important uh, thing: is enabling people to work from home, enabling people to work from their own devices. I think is a very important trend, um, which isn't just hype, and uh, and you know, moving the center of gravity of the IT to the center of gravity of the user base, which is effectively out there on the internet. Do you th how much how much reconstruction does IT need to go through, in your opinion? over the next decade from where it is today to be truly agile? So I think that the, you know, we're looking at the second major paradigm shift in IT. The first being from mainframes to client server, the second being from client server to cloud. And in order to do that, you need to move, you know, virtualization isn't just about hardware, it's about storage and networking and so on, and eventually about data centers as well. So I think the best thing to do is to establish a, a homogenous private cloud architecture in a multi-tenant data center, and then start migrating applications over to it. Connect out to public providers like Google and Salesforce and Amazon and so on when you have to, um, but you know, use the right tool for the job. I think that's the best way Let's to- Let's talk about enable. applications, because obviously, you know, I totally agree with you. That transformation, mainframe client server, you had computing and you had apps. You know, granted they were on top of those platforms. Now you have cloud, which is a whole nother level of infrastructure conversations, software defined data center, et cetera, et cetera. But now apps or mobile, and you mentioned expensive ports, everything on top of that. What's going on, in your opinion, at the app level in, uh, right now? How early is it? What are the key issues? Is it still kludgy? What's your view on that? So, 20 years ago, you'd look, to, uh, you'd look to businesses to see what was coming next. Faxes, international direct dial, they had it first, they had the money, they had the infrastructure. Nowadays, to look at what's happening next, we look at the consumers. This is the consumerization of IT. So we look at things like Skype and Facebook and so on. If we look at Gmail and Facebook versus, you know, say Microsoft Outlook, it's a completely different interface. It's all web-based, it's delivered from a global platform of servers, it's high performance, it's highly secure, it's highly available. That's the difference. Let's talk about another disruption area, um, outsourcing. Obviously HP is a huge outsourcing. Mm -hmm. They took the write down on EDS, which is, you know, they swallowed that thing and had to let a lot of it out, a lot of hot air in that deal. Um, but you got other big firms out there that have been handling all the uh, roles for companies. Capgemini is some of the big names mm -hmm. I've interviewed on theCUBE, and those are mon big monster companies. And then you know, we got guys like Randy Bias, the cloud scaling friends of ours that are building these what start out as boutiques that are going to grow and be the new guys. Um, so let's talk about the new architecture of outsourcing or managed services. What do you think of that? I mean, what's your, because it's, you got the old way, kind of the Cap Gemini's. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to run everything for you and then that doesn't really give you a lot of flexibility. And then you're going to have a lot of more the nimble guys. Yeah. What's your take on that whole market of outsourcing and any predictions you can share? Well, I think, you know, we used to talk about application service providers and the problem with that was that you'd have somebody else running your IT in the same fashion that you were using the same technology at the same scale, single tenant, but then charging like a premium on top of that, a utility premium if you like. And you know, this, this didn't really add a whole lot of value, but if you move to like, for example, a generic service like email, you move to a service like Microsoft Office 365, they get the economies of scale, you know, you've got your multi-tenancy, so that's kind of, I guess, the end game of outsourcing, right? You don't have to have people running servers and doing backups and all this stuff. You, running email is not something at the end of the day which gives you a competitive advantage. So, the people in the IT who, who are worth their salt really will, will go on to applying IT to business problems rather than this you know, $8 in 10 of keeping the lights on. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think it's a natural progression. So it's really. about the business value. Exactly. Right, final question uh, for you is um, your take on software-defined networking. Obviously the Nasir acquisition um, caught everyone by, off guard really. Uh, it's a category now and uh, not a lot of research out there, not a lot of data. I mean, I was talking to someone and we, well, we have 
oh, I think we have the best data uh, on, that, on that category through our unique uh, I, I proprietary tool that we built, but you, know, you can't just call a survey house and say, hey, give me, give me the, a panel on what people think about software-defined networking. It's so new and so disruptive and emerging, there's not a lot of data on that, so I want to get your opinion. What do you think of software-defined networking and how that relates to what HP's talking about here, which is software-defined servers and software-defined now storage, as David Scott announced yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, you know, HP's looking solid there, but, I, but, but specifically the networking. Um, that's a big part of it. What's your take on that? So I think it's, you know, virtualization was a big deal for hardware. I think virtualization in, in networking is, is a big deal as well. Um, it certainly is interesting for dealing with you know, those kind of edge applications like storage where you need to have the high performance and so on. There's a lot, you know, Ethernet is a non-deterministic network, so you need to have a whole lot of things around that to make that work properly with applications like storage. Um, I spend a lot of my time working on, uh, on how to connect these cloud components together, and a lot of that is through network virtualization, things like VLANs and so on. So, you know, you can currently come into uh, the Equinix marketplace and find a cloud provider, but how do you actually connect to them that's, I think, where a lot of the value is in wiring all of these hybrid IT systems together. Actually, I have one more final question. I think we have a little more time here. So I want to drill into the virtualization. Um, obviously, virtualization, let's take VMware, for instance, as a ex random example. I mean, started out as a completely different company, uh, and then now has morphed in a whole completely different direction. And a lot of speculation around what's going on there. They're still doing well. Um, but what's happened in virtualization that has caught you off guard or that you've predicted? Uh, and then, the second half of the question is, what do you think of virtualization going forward, how that will morph? So, so candidly tell, tell me what you think you got right about the uh, virtualization market and what caught you off guard. Wow, that, I didn't think that would happen, if anything. And then what's the, the, how it morphs going forward. Yeah, so um, I think the main thing that's happening in virtualization is the, uh, is the commoditization of the hypervisor. You know, there's a bunch of different ones now you can't really make that, get any value from selling a hypervisor. A lot of the activity there is in these cloud management platforms. Uh, I think though that the big one that's kind of got me is in the standardization of it. You know I've been um, established the Open Cloud Initiative and so on, so this is a big area of interest for me. I kind of worry that we're going in the direction where we'll end up with a Word document of the cloud. So I would really like to see us focus more what on- What do you mean by that? Well, you know, you had, you had Office 97, you know, Service Pack 2, and you could only open that Word document if you wanted it to work properly on Office 97 with Service Pack 2. You had a bunch of, yeah, okay. you know, open office and stuff, but if you tried to transfer the documents, it never really kind of worked properly. And I worry that we'll have the same thing uh, in, in, the, in the cloud space, and I really would rather not see that. Relative happen. to the hypervisor or apps? Well, I mean, it's, it's mostly about the, hyper, the virtual machine format and so on, but what I'd really like to see, going back to the hybrid IT side of things, it's one thing if you can connect all of this stuff together, but I want to be able to seamlessly, like literally drag and drop, or ideally automate the migration of a virtual machine from a private, you know, on-premise or hosted infrastructure to a public cloud provider like Amazon and vice versa. I think that's a very important well, that's function. David, David Scott was pointing to that, and I know there's a lot of uh, work going on at the University of Illinois around kind of with compiler technology around <laughs> virtual scene portability. Well, one of the things that I'm working on is like an SMTP for the cloud, but for cloud workloads, like a simple workload transfer protocol. So, so watch this space, we might come up with something interesting. Okay, there. at Sam J is his t Twitter uh, handle, at Sam J, follow him on Twitter, great person to know doing some great cutting edge work. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, great to see you again. This Thanks is SiliconAngle.tv, SiliconAngle.com's CUBE coverage of HP Discover in Europe, in uh, Germany. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.